Hey guys, it's Jess, and today I want to talk about how you can use the library to become a software engineer. Now, spoiler alert, all of these are free, so be sure to stick around to the end so that you can hear how you can possibly get things like lynda.com and Team Treehouse for free. I know when I first started my coding journey, I was broke, so this played a huge role in me deciding whether I was going to go to a boot camp, go to a four-year college where I would increase my student loan debt, and I didn't want to do either one, so I had to get resourceful. Now, before we get into these topics, I do want to point out that the most important thing you have to do first is get a library card. Now, of course, these are free at most, if not all libraries. Let's talk about meetups. Now, you guys have heard me talk about these in my other videos. I swear by them, not only for self-taught developers, but also those of you who are in boot camps or going to a university or for your college, um, even for people who are already working in the tech industry. Meetups not only allow you the opportunity to learn from other people in the tech space, but it also gives you an opportunity to network with people who could become your next mentor or your next employer. Meetups are perfect because they put you in this environment of like-minded people who can not only teach you and inspire and motivate you, but it also gives you a chance to see that you're not alone in any stage that you're in on your journey. Now, not all meetups are at your local library, nor are local libraries the only place where you can find out where a meetup is going to be held. I hope that made sense. I also included them in this video because you can check with your local library to see how you can host your own meetup. Now, I've done this before and it was a great opportunity to get around other tech people, but it also gives you a chance to do something without having to source a venue or pay for a venue because most of the times hosting something at a library is free. Now, to check for meetups, I like to use an app called Meetup. Simply download the app, sign up for an account, and then search for terms like software engineer, programmer, uh, web development, and you'll start to see all these different groups. You'll also want to search by your city, and you'll start to see all these different groups populate that are within that realm. An important thing to do once you've gotten your groups and you've joined them is to turn on your notifications and make sure that your emails are set up properly so that you can get notified anytime those groups are hosting a meetup near you. For example, I just got a notification recently that one of the groups I'm part of is having a meetup here soon where we will be learning how to handle large data using Python pandas. I have no idea what that means, but it'll give me an opportunity to learn a new skill using a programming language that is very popular and used widely among software engineers and developers. And I'll be doing this for free. You're gonna hear that a lot in this video. This one should go without saying, but since we're here, books. I know that we're in a digital space where everyone is more so getting things at their fingertips, but there is nothing like a good book. I'm not only talking about books that will help you learn how to code, but books that will help you become a better thinker, um, learn how to study better, things that will help you with problem solving so that you can apply those tactics. Reading will always be essential, so while you're here, you may as well indulge in all the knowledge you can so that you can grow as a person, but also grow as a programmer once you become an engineer or a developer. I'll be filming a video really soon about my current go-tos when it comes to books, so if you're interested in that, be sure to subscribe to my channel so that you don't miss out. No computer? No problem. <laughs> I've had a few people contact me asking me if they think it would be okay to start coding using a tablet, and my answer to that would be, Probably yes, but mostly no. Now I understand not everybody has access to a laptop or desktop, so I wanted to talk about computer labs and lending services that you can utilize for free through your library so that you can start your path to becoming a software engineer right away. Now my library pretty much has a computer anywhere you turn. We also have machines that lend out laptops for up to an hour so that you don't have to just sit in this one designated space. You can kind of move around, find your own comfortable, quiet place in the um, library. That way you are comfortable and in a clear space when you're learning how to code. Now it is very important for you to understand the guidelines that your library puts in place. There are certain things that you can and cannot do on the desktops and laptops, so just make sure you have a good grasp of what that means before you check them out. One important guideline that my library has put in place, and I'm sure this is all other libraries, is that you cannot download any software to their devices. You also cannot plug up anything external, like an external hard drive, flash drive, anything of that nature. Most developers and software engineers use softwares like VS Code and Atom to write their code, and these softwares do require that you download them to your computer. So you may be wondering, well, how can I practice what I'm learning at the library if I can't download IDEs such as Atom 
or VS Code to practice and write my code? Well, using online resources like CodePen allow you to write out your code, practice what you're learning, and actually build out projects right there on their online editor. And because this is accessible on a browser, you don't ever have to worry about not being able to access the code that you've spent so much time working on at the library once you have to turn in your laptop or end your session on the desktop. CodePen is also a great platform to use when you are building out your projects and your portfolio to get inspiration and even source code for different things, but please always make sure that you are making your code unique and making it your own. All you have to do is go to codepin.io, sign up for a free account, and then you can access your code anytime, anywhere, as long as you have internet access. So you could technically use this to code on your phone, but I still recommend in order to get the best coding experience that you use a laptop or desktop anytime you're able to. And now that you're about to be an A1 programmer, don't forget that you can also go back and use these computers and laptops to then craft your resume and your portfolio so that you can get your first software engineering or developer job. So we have our networking tools, we have our books, and we have our devices to practice the things that we're learning. Speaking of learning, did you know that you could possibly get lynda.com and Team Treehouse free through your library just by having a library card? I didn't, so y'all about to be a lot further than I was at the beginning. Now I do want to mention that I live in the US and this is not available at every single library in the country. And I also don't know how this works for those of you who live internationally. So the best thing that you can do is just contact your local library and see what things they offer for free just by having a library card. Now, if you're not familiar with what lynda.com is, it's kind of like Skillshare where you can get on there and search for different courses to take to continue your learning in a certain area. And Team Treehouse is specifically for programmers where you can get on there and learn different things like JavaScript and Python. And that's actually how I'm learning Python right now. Now, platforms like lynda.com and Team Treehouse could easily run between $25 to $40 to $50 a month. Um, so to get these platforms for free is awesome. Now, I believe with lynda.com, you only get the first month free, but if you have your stuff set out and you have everything planned out, you could really do a lot in a month. And it also gives you an opportunity to see if you even like their platform before you go full out and purchase it. And then with Team Treehouse, the way that it works is the library buys the licenses from Team Treehouse. So it's kind of like checking out a book. As long as the licenses are available, you should be able to get a free uh, Team Treehouse account. Now, you wanna make sure that you are being active on that account because I believe after 21 days, it will be disabled and you don't want that to happen. So just continue using it and you wanna be consistent anyway because learning how to code is an everyday thing. You need to put it into practice every day. So just use your account and you should be fine. So check with your local library, not only on these resources that I'm sharing, but about other resources to continue your learning. So I hope this video helped. If you're anything like how I was and you wanna get starting on your coding journey right away, but you may not have the resources or funding to do so, or maybe you just wanna save your coin. Either way, if you are trying anything I mentioned in this video today, please leave a comment below and let us know how it helped you. And if you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up so that we can continue to help others. As always, you know I like to thank you guys for making it to this point in the video, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.